assisted living facility has COVID-19, state resumes downward positive test percentage. Giving Tuesday campaign to target RCS, wrongful death lawsuit filed in fatal school bus crash. These and other lo local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. An update as of Monday evening states that an assisted living facility in Sheboygan County has recorded the presence of COVID-19, according to Monday's daily summary from the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health. The first notification was received by the county DPH on Thursday and April 23rd, but only reported today. A second case associated with that outbreak was subsequently reported this past Thursday, April 29th. All staff, residents, and family members have been informed, and public health continues to monitor close contacts. Over the weekend, Public Health Sheboygan County Emergency Management and the facility partnered to test residents and the staff that had close contact with the confirmed cases to help prevent the further spread. The facility involved was not named and DPH reiterated their responsibility to protect the privacy and confidentiality of individuals when determining how data is shared. They said that enough information would be shared to support thorough and comprehensive response but they must be thoughtful about how that data is released while ensuring confidentiality. As for the numbers, two cases were added to yesterday's count for a total of 56 in the county. 10 of those are still active, and of those, two are hospitalized, 44 persons have recovered, and 46 tested negative since yesterday. The state percentage of cases coming up positive over the last day was 9.9%, which is an improvement from Sunday's 11.1%, beginning a trend that must continue for 14 consecutive days in order to trigger the first phase of the Badger Bounce Back program to reopen Wisconsin society and workplaces. Right now, the earliest that could happen is May 18th. The Department of Workforce Development is dealing with a backlog of unemployment claims due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Around 400,000 people in Wisconsin have filed for unemployment benefits since March 1st. The Unemployment Office says all claims have been processed, but until DWD can hire more people, they'll just be playing catch up. The state has already pulled more than 100 staff members from other departments, and they are now reviewing applicants to hire another 200 people. The state has already waived a one-week waiting period for newly unemployed, and those who have lost their jobs are also eligible for up to $600 per week and additional federal benefits. Giving Tuesday is an idea that began in 2012 to encourage people across the world to do good. Eight years later, it is being used locally to help people who live with the challenges to get through the COVID-19 crisis. RCS Empowers enables Sheboygan County individuals with disabilities and special needs to get jobs and live as independently as possible with dignity and respect. Many of their clients struggle with isolation on a regular basis, but with safer at home in place, the isolation is even more acute. Today, RCS Empowers will participate in Giving Tuesday Now to gather funds that will be used to do wellness checks, enhance individual and group learning opportunities, and strengthen social connections, according to RCS Empowers President Martha Vendelis. Those wishing to donate will find a PayPal link on the RCS homepage at rcsempowers.com. The family of a kindergarten student who was killed while boarding a school bus has a wrongful death lawsuit. 
the family of Marina Kranz filed the suit on March 20th. Kranz was stuck or struck and killed on February 10th by the driver of a pickup truck who was driving on the shoulder of the road by Carl Molinex, who is 76. Her sister was also injured in the crash, and the lawsuit names Milinex as the and his insurance company, State Farm Mutual, as defendants. It claims the driver was negligent while operating his vehicle, and the crash remains under investigation by Wishara County Sheriff's Department. Criminal charges have not been filed. Garland Nelson's arraignment on Monday for allegedly killing Nick and Justin DeMille was postponed as Nelson asked for a new judge and a change of venue. Nelson faces multiple charges, including two counts of murder in the first degree for July 21st death of Shawano County Brothers. An arraignment was scheduled for Monday, but Nelson will not enter a plea until he, after a new judge is assigned and a new hearing date is set, according to the clerk of courts. The new judge will also hear the, mo or the change in venue motion as a date to be scheduled. Officials say the two were at Nelson's cattle farm to collect $250,000 Nelson owed them. The complaint says Nelson killed the brothers, burned their bodies, and hid them in a manure pile. And finally, Governor Tony Evers met with the legislative leaders late Monday afternoon. Today, the state Supreme Court hears arguments in a case brought by the Republican leaders to block extension of Evers' safer at home order. But Evers said Monday the two are not related. It does not have anything to do with the court case or getting in front of the court case, he said. It is just seeing if the Republicans have a plan, and if so, is there areas of common ground? Republican leaders who requested the meeting favor a plan to put out by business groups to reopen the state's economy sooner than May 26 and the end date for Safer at Home. Ryan Nilstuen, chief legal counsel to the governor said the state's stakes in the state Supreme Court are high. Ryan said the administration believes the law and passes decisions are on their side and that 41 other states have some version of stay at home orders in place and we are hope that the court listens to the facts and what the laws are. And if there is any adverse decision, we are going to do whatever is necessary to make sure the public is protected. And we do everything we can in order to mitigate these harms of this disease. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.